least here we cut the chit chat a hole. This year we're going to grab the bull by the balls and kick those punks off campus. Well, looks like the cows have come home to roost. Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the movie show. As you can tell, Mike is unfortunately sick this week, so I'm filling in. This week's show is brought to you by Odeon, who are hosting a 20th anniversary screening of Titanic. It's on the 17th of August. And we've also got a great show for you this week. We have interviews with Jada Pinkett Smith for Girls Trip. We also got reviews of The Big Sick and, of course, Girls Trip. And we're going to be talking about The Farthest as well. Uh, if you want to win this week's uh, competition prize, it's an entertainment.ie goodie bag. All you've got to do is tell us the name of the HBO show that Kamal Nanjani stars in. That's the HBO show that Kamal Nanjani stars in. It's very, very popular. Just tell us the name, comment below, and we'll pick a winner later on. And we have a very special guest. Bangers and mash. <laughs> TJ Miller. Fish and chips. This is what you had today. eggs. No, but I've been looking to eat a scotch egg in Ireland. I think that's pretty ironic. Sure. And then I've been joking with everybody. I was just informed merely an hour ago that um, I've been joking with people that, like, it's so insane that you guys eat beans for mm-hmm. breakfast and that that's so crazy that it's weird that you would imagine a person would wake up and be like, beans. You know what I could go for right now is some baked beans. And so I've been joking about that for the last 24 hours, and then I was just informed, well, now we don't really eat beans here. That's more of an English thing. And I was well, like, no, well, see, shit. No, it's not. Well, shit. shite. It's, it's, no, to be fair, to be fair, right? It, it is a part of... we can of curse, shit. right? This oh, yeah, is course, dot yeah, .ie. Yeah. I thought I was here to do butte.ie. <laughs> <laughs> and I was informed that that's not the case, and it's largely because of my appearance. Well, we do. I'm not. So they threw me over. They go, you know, you're not very beautiful, but you're entertaining. So we're gonna have you head right upstairs. <laughs> you guys have different mail slots in your office yeah. for the different, but they all just fall on the floor. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So you could put it in any one of them. It's still gonna just be in a pile on mm-hmm. the stairway. You're I still actually, picking up the coffee. Well, What's it's the name good. Of the coffee place. <laughs> Is it good? The, it's good, but no, like even the 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 mail drops and stuff. Like I've started to use mail. Or not mail. I've started to use like the moisturizer, and it works as well. Like it's not specific for male or female. You know what I mean? You know, of? I've been starting to use mail, just actual like parcels, and rubbing those on my <laughs> yeah. face. It's good and for the, exfoliating. The ink, the ink seems to really moisturize, and mm-hmm. the paper exfoliates. Works. I had. I was on a radio station earlier today, and. I said, do you guys have any food? And they all paused. And this is very Irish of them because you guys, first of all, as a people, you are oppressively friendly. It's overwhelming. <laughs> it's very, very strange as an American sure. to say to somebody, "Is do you know if this hotel is at the end of the block? And then 20 minutes later, they've explained every single place that you can see live music. Yep. They're telling you the best grocery stores, where to get the best pint. Oh, you know, you gotta go. We were in Kilkenny, Kilkenny, Ireland, for the the Kilkenny Cat Laughs Festival, <laughs> um, and we were in Kilkenny, and this guy went on for twenty five minutes, and at the end he was like, "And the most beautiful music on a Thursday. Go in there, look for Nancy, tell her that I sent you, and she'll make you a home cooked meal. She's gonna rub your feet, and it's this insane thing. And because we're polite Americans, we're sort of listening, it. listening, listening. And as, as we left, Kate was like. I guess they don't need Yelp here. Oh, no, 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 no it's fine. No. We'll guide you. Yeah, yeah. you're fine. Yeah, yeah, you don't. There would be no reason to use the internet trying to find something because, you know, you ask one Irish person, then they'll tell you the back entrance is here. If you want to, if you want to get out without paying, you can go out the window in the mm-hmm. win- in the latest room, and they don't care. They'll let you go. They can see it just to slip out. It'd be fine. Yeah, like we're okay with it. Like it's- I love it. But at the end of any conversation with someone who's Irish. And you're an American. It's been so friendly that you're kind of like, you think we're up what to are something? you trying to get out of me? <laughs> what do you want? Are you trying to steal from my family? No, we're just that friendly. <laughs> no, you're just that friendly. I think we've been talking about a bunch, but I think that in this country, everybody is having a pretty good time. Sure. And when you talk to them, they want you to have a good time also because they're having a good time. So they're really, really very forthcoming with like, this is really fun and you should, oh, that's at the secret garden Well, you've got to go to this kebab place and, um, you know, go see that. And they just, they want to enhance your experience, yes. whatever it's going to be. And I don't like that. I want you to stop talking to me and go away. <laughs> 
I just want you to move so I can walk to where I'm headed faster. Right. Or like that's we're slowing you down kind way. of thing. Yeah. yeah, that's the New Yorker way. Okay. In New York, I've had elderly women be like, and like tell me to move out of their way. Yeah. They're like, I I have a place to be. Actually, they're in their seventies. I'm like, I'm so sorry. Oh, wait, like the pushing the way with the Zimmer frame, right. like exactly. It's, I'm like, yeah. you need to get on a rascal and just go down the street. It's the right way to do it. Um, okay, so you're in town for you can have your drink if you want. Oh, I know. <laughs> it was there. I just, I this is you, Ireland. You, I you looked longingly like, at it. Like. I, no, I looked at David Hasselhoff. And That's was the like, longing look. Yeah, the longing <laughs> look was wondering if he's wearing a Nirvana it does, do, it does look like it, doesn't it? It's not, though. It I don't know why we have that there. I mean, Vana he's never maybe? been on the show. He's never been on the show, but you also kind of keep your batteries here. Yeah, this is true. But that's part, of, that's part of that, though. That uh, turns on. I see what you're saving. Yeah. You don't turn it on for the less important guests. Well, no, hang on. Let me just see now. Let's see if I can turn it on. We'll throw that on when John Landis is here. Well, he didn't come in. So look, there, oh, we there we go. The guy from Yogi Bear 3D is here. We're going to to save the lights. <laughs> But here, you're going to be in, um, like, you've a load of films out this year. You've got, like, Emoji I'm movies. in all of it. I'm trying to oversaturate the market. Really? I'm just pushing it to a place where internationally people are like, enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, to be sure. I, I mean, I left a very successful television I wasn't going to ask. I wasn't, I was not going to ask. Well, I know you've talked that's about why you guys are entertainment.ie and not an entertainment.org. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's good. I, uh. Um, yeah, I left the television show at its height because I just needed more time. The schedule was getting so out of control, and I needed more time to spend sort of focused on stand-up because of what's happening right now. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, the American Empire is burning to the ground in front of no, our very faces. No, really? We're aware. It's, it's a bit of a disaster. Oh, wait. It's the darkest period in the history of our country. And uh, so... I decided it might be better if I start speaking directly to the progressives that didn't vote instead of being a like successful television actor that didn't really matter too much to me. Yeah. And I'd sort of done, I'd done what I was going to do on that show. I'd learned course, yeah. what I what I could learn from it, and I thought this would be an interesting move for myself, but also to like force the show into changing, becoming more dynamic, breaking away from the cyclical nature of. You've really writing. got the script down pat, I'm going to tell you that right now, because I've read some of the interviews. You've got the script down pat, and I love it. So, fair play. No, you know, it's it's easy to have the script down pat, because it's all... It's all true, real. yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. And I, you know, I'm, I'm not a person who... I think I've been pretty clear from the get-go that I don't really care about any of this. Like, it's... Yeah. It's very interesting to me, but a man who did his best work in the major motion picture Yogi Bear 3D, which I'm sure you've seen... <laughs> Uh, because men aren't funny, but women are, and um, <laughs> it's kind of—it's this thing of like, uh, you know, that was my best work. Everything since then has been kind it's of been a downward down. slope, mm -hmm. and I consider it all just gravy, you know, mm. uh, disgusting, terrible, salty gravy, gravy, salty. Well, you guys like salt in Ireland. Yeah, you guys, this is true. You're yeah. putting salt on your butter. You're salting those fries. Mm-hmm. Who knows? Who knows what's gonna have salt? Are you not a Are you not a fan of salt? I love it. I ate. Um, I said, do you, "Oh yeah, I didn't finish this." I said, "Do you guys have any food at the radio station?" Sure. And it was so Irish that the guy goes, "No, but you know we have a we have a vending machine, and I could go get you something from the like a radio host is like, I'll stop the program and go <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and go buy you something from the vending machine. You don't have to pay for it." <laughs> I mean, I'm just utter shite. I mean, just let me go over I've there. I've got and Snickers do that. in the fridge if you want some. Right, exactly. And then this I'm not guy, kidding. Do you want a Snickers? Radio host gave me no because he gave me brown toast. Right. And I demanded Irish butter, which all butter in Ireland is Irish butter. Sure. And uh, he brought it to me, and it was the most delicious, driest <laughs> toast that made it unable for me to speak, which is always good for radio. Oh, oh yeah. Dear. And. Um, so I'm all full, and we had fish and chips and mushy peas for nice. uh, mm -hmm. lunch. I'm going to have it again for dinner. That's all I'm eating, exclusively mm -hmm. fish and chips here. You all right? And I'm not drinking any water, just beer. Just beer. That's good. Have you had Irish. <laughs> I'm going to ask this now, and I know I'm not going to I'm gonna get such shit for this. Have you had a Guinness since you got here? You fucking idiot. <laughs> I'm really no, sorry. No, no, no. I'm really sorry. No, I'm I mean, really sorry. Yes, of course. And we're always fascinated by the fact that you guys will say you should go to this bar. They pour a really good pint. Because in the States, it's just like, do you want butter, Bud Light? And they just pour it, and you drink it as quickly as you can. 
It's so much more about getting drunk than here where it's like, mm, you taste that it. That is quite a pour. Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> I They gave me an Irish coffee, right? Because I was like, got to do it. And uh, which is even more hack than yeah. having Guinness. And I had an Irish coffee and he brought it over to me. And I had some liquid marijuana, which I believe this is illegal and I can't get arrested for even talking about this. Sure. But it was in a syringe. And so he brought me the um, Irish coffee. I didn't coffee. realize it came in a syringe. But you got to check out California. And uh, <laughs> it's crazy there. I was about to joke that here you can drink. If you're drunk at 11 and you're like ordering more beer, sure. the bartender is it's like... Fine. I'm so happy that you're having a good time. This is fantastic. Let me bring you more stuff until you can't stand up, and then I'll call you a cab, and I'll buy you something from the vending machine on the way out. Sure. Um, but it's, you know, and you guys don't really smoke marijuana here, right? It's not as big of a thing. You used to have a lot of hash. Now it's half and half, I've heard. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I mean, but you people can still smoke get weed it. here, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. they do. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. people smoke weed, absolutely. But so in, in California, or Cali, as those of us who are douchebags say, um, or the you, OC. Yeah, no one ever says that. Uh, <laughs> that would be like me ordering a scotch egg in Ireland. And uh, so, you know, there, marijuana is, like, it's weird to people. First of all, like I said, we don't drink beer in Los Angeles. That would not be a, it's very, very strange sure. that you would have one beer, but somebody can be on their fifth, like, joint, and if you have a third beer, they're like, are you, you okay, okay, man? Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. going on? Like, did you just get a breakup? Are you having trouble in the home? Like, what's yeah. what's the deal? Um, so it's it's sort of strange. Oh, right. Now I'm getting the sign that I need to talk about why I'm on the show. Sure. Well, let's <laughs> really finish understand. your point, and then we'll get to we'll so we'll, we'll circle back in Los Angeles. Everybody is high. Sure. All the time. If you go into a store and somebody is very high and you're very high. It's almost understood that you may not be able to find your wallet and mm -hmm. they may not be able to work the machine for your credit card and so you'll just walk out with stuff for free. And it's an understanding that you'll come back and yeah. pay for it. Oh, you'll you're... come back if you can remember how to get to the place. Sure. That's how high you are. Um, so it's just a very different culture there, whereas in New York, the drinking culture is similar to here, except... The big deal is, you know, we're the Irish, you know, we drink, we party, we're always drinking, have more of Guinness, third, but you guys like open your bars at 1030 or something, and then it closes some of them at 11 or midnight, and sometimes, the other yeah. ones sometimes, like, if it's a two o'clock, then now, that is so fucking weird mm. to those of us who live in New York. In New York, the bars open at six in the morning, and they close between 4 and 5 a.m. Yeah, that's crazy. Listen to what I just said. There is only an hour when you cannot buy drinks in an establishment. And during that hour, you can buy beer, four <clears throat> loco, anything from a bodega. So you theoretically like Las Vegas. To, Las you can Vegas, drink nonstop. The idea that you would close a bar in Las Vegas, like the, the bar owners, they're like, what? You guys don't like money? <laughs> what happened? But in Ireland, you guys are like, you know what? We're drunkards, but we like to keep it during appropriate business yeah. hours. Sure. So that was a really interesting thing for me. The other thing that I love mm -hmm. is not mentioning the Vodafone Comedy Festival because <laughs> so it glad infuriates you the young lady that I'm with. Uh -huh. And so I'm not going to mention the Vodafone Comedy Festival. Don't even, don't I'm even not bring it up. Mention that it's in the Ivy Gardens. Ivy spelled incorrectly. And I am certainly not going to mention that it's my favorite with a U, uh, my absolute favorite comedy festival in Ireland. And I'm speaking directly to those of you who run the Kilkenny Comedy Festival in Kilkenny, Ireland. Say right into the camera. Oh, I am. <laughs> I'm staring straight down the barrel. Uh, no, it's, it's going to be so fun. And I'm doing something that uh, you here in Ireland appreciate more than in the United States, which is we're doing sketch comedy. With we only got oh, two, we only got two more segments. We're gonna two, do. We've got two more minutes. That's I'm giving the wrap up Ugh, for two minutes. I didn't it. get to ask you anything. All right, okay, I'm gonna stop you now because I want to ask you something. Wait, we're doing sketch with sure. heavyweight, my sketch comedy group. That I guess they let me in. I don't know why I always say it's my sketch comedy group, but it's the four of us: Nick Vatterot, Mark Ratterman, Brady Novak, and it's a great, very silly, absurdist sketch group. And then I'm doing solo stand-up shows. 
um, which I just found out are only 25 minute sets or something. I thought I was doing an hour, so you guys are going to love what I'm going to do for you here. Uh, I'm just going to speak three times as fast. And, uh, Keep going. But you've got to gotta, you gotta come check this thing out, especially yeah. Sunday and Thursday. Those are the good shows. These Friday, Saturday shows, they're real shite piles, as you guys <laughs> would call them. No one's ever said that in Ireland. No. No. Let's, let's you and I talk for a second. We okay. got about D, a minute, take it over. We got a, about a minute and 20 seconds. Okay. Tell me about yourself. I How did you get into this work? Were you always into <laughs> websites? You like dom domain names? No, 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 no. This has to be about you. So I need to ask really quick about Deadpool 2 because you know, you I'm just told super, me about super yourself? excited. You're selfless. She's the type of woman who's going to say, hey, this is about you. And that, I'll tell you, makes for a great wife because oh, women aren't funny. Right. I just keep doing that. Right. It's not like I constantly work with women and I'm trying to get an Amy Schumer movie. Mm. Amy! Give me a call! I want to see that. Me. I know, me too. She's yeah. so funny. Is she? Yeah. Uh-oh, now we got a real misogynistic <laughs> shit. You son of a bitch. Don't you know under this administration? Yeah, yeah. He, he went from this to like... <laughs> uh, so, uh, you're excited about Deadpool 2? I, I am too, because it is very, very, very funny. Not as excited as I am about not mentioning the Vodafone Comedy Festival yes. at the Ivy Gardens, which is really just one garden, but they put an S on it because... Like the dot IE, no one knows what the hell is going on with that last letter. Why isn't it dot IR? What are you guys doing? Was that taken by Iberia? No, IR is Iran. What? It would be an entertainment dot Iran, because IR is Iran, I think. And I ran. <laughs> ran so fast. So Deadpool 2 is going to be yeah. absolutely better than the first one. Awesome. The stakes are higher, and it's a different story. What I've been saying is, like, I loved the entire Hangover series. I mean, it was the third one. I wish I had been able to get my money back, but I did enjoy all three of them. Uh, Core Burger, which is the show that I produce about this giant uh, blue puppet alien from another planet that killed uh, half of a Japanese morning show and took it over and slaved the rest of them to have his own talk show. And he asked Ed Helms, I thought this was really funny, he asked, um, he said, what was your, I don't do a very good impression, but what, what was your worst Hangover. What's what's been your worst hangover? Was it three? A three Al Pacino. Was it two or was it three? Um, but Deadpool two is going to be very very uh, very different than the first one. So Hangover okay. two was kind of same movie, different place. Mm. Um, whereas Deadpool two is a totally different movie, very different storyline, much more meta, much more fourth wall breaking. Yeah. Weasel gets a gun. I'm not going to tell you if he shoots it or not. Sure. <laughs> and, uh, is it true though you wrecked like an iPad when you were reading the script apparently you like dropped it or something 100% how did yeah. you know that because I read man you've done we so much more research writers. than I had somebody talk <clears throat> to me and I go well you know all my work since Yogi Bear 3D has kind of been an, mostly an afterthought and this guy was like oh you were in Yogi Bear 3D and I almost walked the fuck <laughs> out of the room <laughs> I mean, what kind of a shite journalist? <laughs> I keep saying shite. You've noticed it. It's more yeah. fun than shit. It is. It is. Oh, so I put the marijuana in the Irish coffee. Right, yeah. And I start to stir it, and the bartender goes, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, oh, my God, I forgot I was not in California. He's going to be like, what the fuck did you just put in here? Yeah. And he goes, do you know how long I spent layering that? Yeah. And so he was pissed that I was fucking up the coffee, not if you that I was it using an illegal hand. substance, and then stirring with a syringe. He was like, I just layered that. <laughs> and, I, and I said to him, I go, well, I'm not going to touch the Guinness. He's like, you better not. I'll, I'll throw you the fuck out of this bar. <laughs> Did you see... And I, I don't I don't always bring this up, but this sure. is entertainment.ir. I mean, this is Iran, so I'd like to speak directly to the Iranese. And mm -hmm. uh, I remember seeing, and there's nothing really funny about Iran. I don't know if you're laughing no, directly God, no. at a country and a people. I think, and it's getting this vibe for me where you're like, women are funny. And uh, I, this is true. This yeah, is sure. Really yeah, true. yeah. Um, I've forgotten what I was talking about. We were talking about Iran, and you said you weren't going to bring this up all that often. The Vodafone thing? The Vodafone Possibly the Vodafone possible. thing. Possibly the Vodafone thing. <laughs> okay, Vodafone. your publicist what is going nuts. She's go. actually going to drag right. you out of here. Well, so... Oh, did you want to give... Um, yeah, yes. get in there. Yeah, yeah, okay, last one. Um, Ready Player One, tell me 
was so briefly. Give me 20 seconds of information about Ready Player One. I'll give you four seconds. You better. Before I give you 20 seconds. Fantastic. Go for it. Is Steven Spielberg nice? All right, and now for 20 seconds sure. on Ready Player One. No, he is such a fucking dick. <laughs> and I hate, first of all, he's a woman, so I just cannot stand him. Right. And, uh, yeah, you knew it. Uh, no, he's, yes, he's the nicest guy. And when you first get there, you can't believe that he's the greatest director in the world, but you know exactly why. Because yeah. he never says anything negative. So he only says, like, a little more color to the voice. All right, oh, that's great. Now try... Just a little faster. Mm. Okay, let's do it again. Just even this one, even faster. Ah, that's per that is that's perfect. Print that one. That's <laughs> circle that. That was a great take. Are you gonna circle that one? Remind me that that was perfect. Do okay, so let's do one more, just like that, and then you can kind of do whatever you want. Circle that one. I loved that one, and that's Jesus. that's kind of the energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you really, really like it, and that's why I think he gets these great performances out of kids. Yeah, and gets the best performances out of our greatest actors like sure. Tom Hanks. Daniel and, Day Lewis. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's a uh, it, it was a real trip. It's a real trip. Yeah. I'll tell you the strangest thing that happened was yeah, what. Okay, I'll tell you what. I won't tell you. Don't tell me. I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know. You. We'll save it for the next entertainment.ie exclusive. Awesome. Thank you. It was so nice to meet Thank you. Thank you, TJ Miller. And I, I feel bad that you were the guest host. I think you should permanently you think? host the show. And if I see somebody else hosting the show, I'm coming right back here <laughs> to be on it if they ask me to. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Thanks, guys. <laughs> okay, thank you. And this yeah, has been Butte.ie. <laughs> coming to you with all the special beauty tips. Remember, use literal mail. Mm -hmm. Wipe it on your face. The ink is both <laughs> hydrating and the paper is exfoliating. Sure. TJ Miller, reporting live from Iran. <laughs> BBC.ie. Okay, we're gonna put, we're gonna we're gonna play the uh, Ready Player One trailer now. So yeah, and take it's it away. so good. And I'm Cheetos Brothers with Steven Spielberg. I'll explain later. Next time. <laughs> I live here in Columbus, Ohio. In 2045, it's still ranked the fastest growing city on Earth, but it sure doesn't seem like it when you live in the stacks. They called our generation the missing millions. Missing not because we went anywhere. There's nowhere left to go. Nowhere except the Oasis. It's the only place that feels like I mean anything. A world where the limits of reality are your own imagination. Well, that was pretty intense. I'm yep. not going to lie. Uh, that was TJ Miller. Um, so we're talking about the big sick and uh, girls trip. We are joined by David Shocknessy from Night Talkers, the uh, yeah. Game of Thrones uh, wrap-up show. Am I sitting in TJC? Is that why it smells like patchouli? What is patchouli exactly? You can Google it. Up. Um, yeah, I'm here to talk yeah. about big sick. If you big want sick. To so we are going to start with that. Big Sick, it's kind of like a Judd Apatow comedy. Kamal Nanjani is in it. Mm -hmm. Zoe Kazan is in it. Tell me all about it. Uh, I haven't seen it. Oh, you haven't seen it? I haven't seen any of it. Oh, God. It's all on you. It's all on you. Well, it was, it's been hyped a lot as the best rom-com of the year. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Which I... Well, I don't know what the rest of the year holds. I'm True. not omniscient. But, you know... Right. like, <laughs> all right. Um, but I think, again, one of those movies that's been a bit hyped. Yeah. And it, I, I was like, okay. Like, I went in. I didn't even see the trailer. I sure. went in. I was like, oh, people have talked about this. It's a great rom-com. Mm -hmm. And it's like actors that I love, Ray Romano and uh, Holly Hunter are mm -hmm. also in it, and they are yeah. probably the standouts in it. They are phenomenal. Um, it's good. It's, it, it, it twists and turns in ways that you probably don't expect a rom-com to go. And I think what's happened that is that in 2017, a rom-com has to be so off the wall and so different yeah. that you're never mm -hmm. going to have a, My Best Friend's Wedding. You're never going to have yeah. something yeah. like that anymore to like <laughs> follow along with. Yeah, but, yeah. 
it does entertain it does like hold your attention it's good it's like a good runtime. but like I didn't love it yeah there's like okay. a few jokes in there that you're kind of like oh okay great yeah. and the whole thing like the fact that uh, Kamal Nanjiani Nanjiani Nanjiani, Nanjiani yeah mm-hmm. um, is Muslim yeah sure comes mm-hmm. Muslim family that plays into it a lot and there's they, they play with that in a nice way that makes it feel fresh and makes sure. it feel different but like mm, yeah, it's just, I mean, I it's kind of it. interesting because like, I think that, like, you, you make an interesting point that, yeah, nearly every romantic comedy nowadays has to kind of turn the conventions, like, mm-hmm. train wreck. Oh, it's a woman yeah. that's, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, being out there, being a kind of a cat or whatever, you know, that sort of thing. And, like, mm-hmm. now with this, it's taking different as- aspects of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas, yeah, like you say, My Best Friend's Wedding, you're never going to see anything like that. Pretty Woman, that's never going to come around again. Yeah. So. It also has a, like... It's like a critique of it but like there's a budget feel to it and it is Amazon Studios produced yeah. as well mm. so there's lots of that kind of <laughs> Amazon Netflix kind of style thing where it's like closer kind of like indie yeah. movie shots where it's like it's darker yeah. so it's not as much production value yeah. it's closer on though it kind of felt like they made it on a dime as opposed to like a proper movie production sure but like it's enjoyable I like mm. it did have a good time mm. I laughed but I wouldn't be like banking on it being like the best rom com you're ever going to see. Yeah. Is it like sweet and sappy at least? But someone like me like it. I I'm like kind of a rom com like you know little fan um, girl person. <laughs> like, how much of the premise do you know about it? Because I feel like, like I've like seen you the can't trailer. Talk, yeah. It's one of those films that you can't really talk about much yeah. without giving a lot of it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, like I kind of left being like, oh, that kind of felt like that was a Grey's Anatomy that I could have watched. Where yeah, they didn't okay, focus on the yeah. doctors and they yeah. focus on the people in the hospital, and they'd be like, "Oh, that was okay. fine. Yeah. That, was, that was fine. I enjoyed yeah. it." There's Diverting for however many minutes it is, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. it's not oh. the best thing you'll see. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Next up, we have uh, Girl Trip, and D, you were over in London talking mm-hmm. to Jada Pinkett Smith. What was she? Right. What was she like? Tell me all about it. Ah, uh, she's really lovely. Like yeah. she, she's been doing a lot of uh, promotional work, you know, sure. over the last week um, on a lot of American talk shows and everything, talking about Girl Trip. It's a project that she's been really passionate about and yeah she's really she's really lovely and sweet and you'll see that in the clip and you can see the full um video on youtube as yeah well, we're gonna so. post the full uh, video in the comments below mm-hmm. so here's d talking to jada pinkett smith thank you so much for talking to me today about girls trip first thank of you. all i have to say it would there was such an infectious sense of joy and fun about this movie please tell me was it as much fun to make as it looked like on the screen absolutely we mm-hmm. had we had the best time i mean making the movie was a girl's trip honestly mm-hmm. and um we were very lucky that we just had um such natural chemistry between the four of us like all four of us really mm-hmm. enjoyed each other's company and just had a blast of a time together and that's rare that mm-hmm. you get that especially with i didn't know Regina Hall or Tiffany Haddish Mm -hmm. at the time so to meet two new women that you know um, I could just embrace as if I knew them as long as I have known Latifah which has been like 30 years I felt like I knew Tiffany and Regina just as long okay so girls trip now I'm not gonna lie to you I looked at the poster of this and Mm. it basically looked to me like it was bridesmaids meets the hangover meets yeah you know just like it's very kind of uh what are you laughing at? You wanted to say black people. I didn't. I wasn't <laughs> going to say black people. But, that is no, but now that you mention it, look, let's be honest about it. Yeah, I mean, it's mm. basically like it's yeah. a, a predominantly black cast. Yeah. Like. Um, is it any use? I mean, is it funny at least? It is. It is funny. And it is very sweet. Like, I think that a lot of the strength in this movie is in those four characters and the chemistry that they share. Like, you really do feel like they've been lifelong friends. And I really liked watching it kind of. I know, well, it is, I don't think it's unfair of me to say this because, like, I am a girl going sure. to a movie that is primarily targeted for women. Yeah. And it was really nice seeing these really, you know, realistic women who were going through, like, really contemporary, relatable struggles. And I really right. like that aspect of it, even more than maybe um, the comedy for me. Now, I will say that I was going into this film with really high hopes because I was reading um, the reviews for it that were coming out in the States, and they were all really, really I've positive. Heard that. Yeah, they were so positive saying, that this movie is like the funniest that they've seen in years and years I wouldn't say it was quite that funny there were sure. some very funny bits but for me sometimes it felt like it was a little forced it was just kind of going for the gross out humor and I, I was wasn't, gonna say is there a lot of gross out yeah humor there's it? a bit of it yeah yeah and for me it just felt I was kind of like oh you're just trying to go for like the shock factor here so I wasn't as mad about that as I was into just like the characterization and kind of even sometimes yeah the drama almost appealed to me more than the comedy but it is still a really like good fun movie yeah. and it is it is kind of really significant you know there aren't enough 
movies with minorities out there and it's great that we're seeing two now in the one yeah. week you know yeah. um so jenny pinkett smith i mean i mean i mean i know she's done like madagascar and mm-hmm. stuff like that but that was a, obviously a kid's film yeah, so yeah. doing something like this an adult comedy how yeah. does she how does she fare she actually does really well and she is one of the funniest actresses in it now a lot of people have been talking about uh tiffany haydish in this movie yeah. she's kind of a, a relative newcomer she has had like a few tv credits i think that this is her first major movie role and she's great in this she has a role that's very like um oh my gosh I forgot her name Melissa McCarthy in Bridesmaids yeah. and like Zach Galifianakis yeah, yeah. you're getting in, it you got it in The Hangover so she's kind of you know like a side character but she really kind of comes into her own because she's so like raunchy yeah. and out there and everything so she's great but yeah it was really refreshing to see Jada Pinkett Smith like really go for comedy when was yeah. the last time she was on cinema screens? Because I honestly can't remember. I can't, I can't think. Like, I mean, Madagascar mm. 3, but I mean, is in her in a live action role? God, I, Matrix mm. Revolutions, maybe? I don't know. Something like that. It's been a while, anyway. I can't yeah. think of the last film I saw her in. In a theatrical release film, I can't think of the last film I saw her in. I suppose than she's like focused on her like role as a mother and everything and she's yeah. been talking about that a lot in the last week you know being a mother and yeah. a wife and everything and it's kind of so nice to see someone so like still you know ingrained in their family and everything but yeah. working as well so yeah. sorry that's me like woman no, 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 do you think there's going to be a sequel do you think because it's, it's already breaking box yeah. office I actually, a- I, I actually asked her about yeah. that so um, yeah well she's hoping for it she doesn't know like what direction it would go in but you know if it continues to do well like in as well in the box office as it's doing in reviews then um yeah we could see a sequel i'd say it would be i mean like a comedy like this like yeah. it can be easily you know run on and on like the hangover like her oh, yeah but that didn't actually end well for anyone did it oh, well, apart from the box office well yeah that's what i'm saying the box office i'm sure mm-hmm. that's all that really matters at the end of the day all right so <laughs> <laughs> on that note <laughs> We're exhausted after that. <laughs> after, yeah, it's been a really big show. Um, if you're listening to the audio asp- audio part of this uh, show, I guess, um, we have an interview with Ema Reynolds. She's the director of The Farthest. It's this brilliant documentary. It's out this week. I swear to God, you go gave see it five it. stars. I gave it five stars. Yeah. It's a really, really good film. Please, please go see it. It is so, so good. And you can hear the interview with Ema Reynolds uh, in the audio part. It's up on iTunes and SoundCloud and Stitcher and all the other places. Um, so yeah that's it that's the everything we got this week um, thanks for watching we're really sorry about the cursing and thank god Mike will be back next week because I never want to host this show ever again alright oh, so that's it bye bye bye, bye.